it for you. Hello and welcome to the first part in a new series of videos that will give homebrew related advice of all kinds for new and existing homebrewers. If you are totally new to homebrew or are having some experience under your belt, then you will be totally forgiven for finding it overwhelming in many areas. This series seeks to make understanding all of the different areas of brewing much easier and I hope you will prove useful to people of all experience levels when it comes to filling in any gaps in knowledge. This first part of this series is looking at choosing a method of brewing and the equipment you will need for it. This is not to say that you will need to be exclusive for just one method. Certainly there are some crossover items here and you can try your hand at each of these if you so desire. So let's get started. Home brewing can be broken down into three basic methods, extract beer kits, all grain or partial mash, but before we move into an explanation of these methods, it should be understood that the results from these are not necessarily determined by the method, but by various other factors. I will now explain these and make a short list of them. The first of these relates to the ingredients that are used in creating your beer. The quality and freshness is vital, and it should be also understood that out-of-date or badly stored ingredients will never match the results that you can obtain from ingredients that tick all of the right boxes. You could have the very best chef cooking the very best cut of meat, but if it is stale then all is lost. The same logic applies to all the ingredients that make up a homebrewed beer. Secondly, you will also need knowledge. The method that you use should be fully understood and executed properly. Videos like mine that provide guides are one route to take in learning, but there are also many books and other courses that you can take to reinforce your understanding. The good news here is that brewing is actually a pretty easy process no matter which way you go, and good enough beer can be brewed by a novice. Over time, if you keep learning more, then small enhancements can be made, which when combined can have a large impact on your homebrew beer's quality. Be aware that opinions certainly do vary on most brewing related topics, but this should be expected as we are looking at an end result that is subject to an individual's taste buds. I encourage brewers to experiment for their own taste and advise you to look very carefully at anyone or any company that tells you they have the very best method for everyone, because frankly this does not exist. And lastly, having the right mindset about brewing is very important too. Do not think that spending extra money is the route to awesome beer. Sure, there will be some great labour-saving and convenient homebrewing products available, but be sure to know that awesome beer can be brewed with very basic equipment too. The same goes the opposite way too. Do not blame your basic equipment for bad results. All too often, bad results can be from a simple mistake. Learning by doing is a great way to go, but be open to accepting your own errors so that you can learn from them and progress. With this introduction now made, let's look at the methods and equipment needed for homebrewing, start with the most simple form first, which is extract beer kits. Here is an example of an extract beer kit which is branded as Bullet Brew. The actual extract kit is shown on the left here, and we also have some brewing sugar shown on the right. More on this later. There are various other reputable kits out there from brands like Mangrove Jacks and Muntins to name just two. Extract beer kits like this one can be purchased in a vast variety of different beer styles these days, and it should be made clear that such kits have advanced greatly in recent years in quality due to new ways of creation and filling. The very first equipment you will need is a fermentation vessel and a paddle or spoon. In this example the fermenter is plastic and the paddle is stainless steel, but either of these items can be plastic or stainless steel. I would advise against the use of wooden paddles for this type of brewing because they can easily harbour bacteria which will naturally spoil your results. The process involved here in making an extract beer kit is very simple. Your very first task is to clean and sanitise your fermenter and paddle. These are both vital steps and again safeguard your beer against spoilage. This cleaning and sanitisation applies to everything that comes into contact with your beer or wort as it is known before it is in its final form. Having a clean and sanitary fermenter applies to all types of brewing. The most known and available cleaner for brewing worldwide is known as PPW. This is provided in a powdered form and is added to water. Made by the same company for sanitising is Star Sam, which is in liquid form and once again is added to water. It is important to know that there are various other brand alternatives to these products that do the same job, sometimes at a lower cost. I suggest seeing what your local homebrew store can offer. After cleaning and sanitising your fermenter, you then add the extract from your kit into the fermenter. This goo is essentially more extract that has had hop oils added, and often this is best warmed in a pot of water to make it nice and runny in the packaging. Be sure to get all of this out. Your task then is to add water gradually and mix this up, which can often be completed in less than 15 minutes. 
if we go back to the last section and think about ingredients, then this is very much taken care of for you as long as it has been stored at temperatures that are not too hot. In terms of knowledge, the kit itself will be provided with instructions which will usually outline the process in a very easy to understand way, which is certainly helped by the plain fact that this process is very simple and easy. After you have mixed the kit thoroughly, you will then pitch your yeast and then cover the vessel with a lid and use an airlock. You are then almost ready for fermentation. It is the fermentation side where most kits advice tends to wander though, as for the best results a stable suitable temperature is important. Because of this, many will simply complete the fermentation in a centrally heated or cooled room, which will often lead to temperature swings. These swings in temperature can lead to offloavers in your own beer. Ideally, you will control your fermentation temperature more directly depending on your needs. I live in Norway, so my needs in general are of the heating kind, so I am using a heat belt here that is positioned near the bottom of the fermentation vessel. This is one of the various ways to go here. I will go into more detail about fermentation and equipment in another part of this series. Let's now look at the basic equipment that you will need for the extract beer kit method. Firstly, you will need a fermenter, or you could opt for a unit tank which will cover both fermentation and serving. This vessel can be as basic or as fancy as you like, but I would strongly suggest that you go with something that offers you temperature control. This can be built in already or added as I showed earlier. More information will be covered in the fermentation guide part of this series. You would also need a paddle for mixing. As mentioned earlier, plastic or stainless steel will work for this method of brewing. Stainless steel will be potentially more useful for other types of brewing though, if you intend to use extract kits as a stepping stone onto other methods of brewing. You would also need a hydrometer and trial jar. This will allow you to calculate your end beer's final alcohol and assess when your beer is finished with fermentation. Then lastly, you will need cleaning and sanitization products to protect your beer from all sorts of nasties that can ruin it. This list covers the beer creation process only. What is missing is what you will use to package and serve your beer, and this is also something that we'll go into more detail about in a future part of this series. And now let's finish up with this method of brewing with the pros and cons compared to other methods. Because there is no actual brew and simply a mixing, this method is very fast compared to other methods. There is a large jump in time needed for other brewing types, which for some is just too much that keeps them with extract beer kits instead of moving on. However, the largest con to extract kits is that you are very limited when it comes to design and creative control compared to other brewing methods because you can only create the beer styles available in kit ranges in the way that they are provided. There can be no doubt that extract kit brewing is a great way to learn the various aspects of the process that are fermentation and serving without investing much money. Everything that you will buy will be used with other brewing methods even when you decide to progress. And then lastly, despite the fact that you only need a small amount of equipment, it is fair to say that in general the cost of ingredients with this method of brewing is higher compared to all grain. Let's now look at all grain brewing. All grain brewing can be made as cheap and simpler or as expensive and complex as you wish. This does not apply to just the equipment used, but also how you buy your recipes. Let's look further into this. On the simple end, you can buy all grain kits like this one that contain everything you need within a box kit. The grain is provided ready crushed and sealed and the hops and other additions are in clearly marked sealed bags too. It is also normal to receive full instructions too, which provide a very easy path to follow. This is a kit example from Norway where I live, but these are very commonly available in all countries where you will find a homebrew store and provide a great way to get started. There will be no leftovers, so as such no waste, and usually a tried and tested recipe your supplier clearly believes will give you a good end result. The only real con is that you will usually pay a premium for having such a kit compared to buying the ingredients separately. You will also find that there are a great deal of recipes available on the internet including the recipes that I share myself on a regular basis on this YouTube channel along with guides. There is also the opportunity of learning how to write your own recipes which is something I actively promote on my channel with many guides to many beer styles already available to learn from. Like most content creators on YouTube, my brewing method of choice is all grain. Let's now briefly look at the basic steps required for an all grain brew. Firstly, you will add water and heat it within your chosen vessel for brewing. This vessel could be a simple pot like this one, or it could be within a specialised brewing system which I will show shortly. 
You will then add grain gradually to either a bag or a container within your vessel and give it a good stir as you go. This first setup shown here is a simple pot and bag, but here is the same thing within a specialist brewing system for comparison. The container that holds the malt here is made of stainless steel rather than being a fabric bag, but the process is identical. Once all of the grain is loaded up and stirred in, we then move on to the next stage. This next stage is known as mashing, and this process will take usually at least an hour and is often performed at two temperatures. This is where the starches of your grain are converted into sugars. These sugars will be converted into alcohol later on, so it is important stuff. In this example, a pump is being used to recirculate our liquid content through the grain bread. This provides a good level of repeatable efficiency with this process, but some all grain brewers will simply stir during this phase. The very next step is that this grain is then removed from the pot or brewing system. With this brewing system shown here, this is simply a case of lifting up the basket that contains the grain and securing it in place safely on top. This then readies us for the next step, which is known as the sparge. It should be known though that this step is not performed by all all-grain brewers, in which case they would simply remove the grain basket fully at this point. The sparge step involves pouring water over the grains, which are underneath this top plate shown in this example. This is performed firstly to release more of the sugars that are held within the grain, and secondly to top up the water volume. For a regular homebrew sized batch of beer this would usually take up to about 30 minutes. Usually this water is preheated to save time, but it can also be cold. More on this later. The next step of the brewing process is usually where we boil, but there are methods that actually skip this step. In modern day brewing the boil is used primarily to add bitterness and flavour via the use of hops. These hops are added at different times of the boil to obtain different effects. Boil times certainly do vary these days, but most commonly they are either between 30 to 60 minutes, though you will still see some using older traditional times of 90 minutes or more. Following the boil, we then need to cool our wort down, readying it for fermentation. There are various different types of equipment for this. I am using an immersion chiller here. Typical cooling times are anywhere from a few minutes to 15 minutes for regular sized batches. The very last steps of the brew is to transfer our finished wort into a fermentation vessel and then pitch our yeast. The total time spent on an all-grain brew can vary wildly depending on factors that include the equipment used, the total volume and boil time, but commonly an average brew will take between 3 to 5 hours from start to finish, including cleanup. Let's now look at the equipment that you will need for all-grain brewing, which is in addition to what has already been specified earlier for extract beer kits. Firstly, you will need at the very least a stainless steel pot and a mash bag. This is the cheapest route but will limit your brew volume compared to, for example, an electric all grain brewing system, which could make the process easier to control temperature wise too. Using a pot that you already own is a great way to start, and in terms of sizing, you're going to need 7.5 litres or 2 US liquid gallons of extra space in a brewing pot or system, though some prefer a little more than this. So, a pot size of 17.5 litres or 4.62 US gallons will be good for an output of either 10 litres or 2.62 US gallons. Perhaps you have a pot already that will let you gain some experience before you take the dive for a larger piece of equipment. You will also need a form of chilling method. This simply could be ice cubes in your sink which will cover a small pot, but for larger batches you will need something more specialist. Quite a few brewing systems will include a chiller, but sometimes this is at extra cost. I also highly recommend purchasing a set of brewer's gloves to protect your hands. These need not be expensive and can be used to protect against high temperature and also chemicals used for cleaning. Lastly, as an optional extra, you may want to use something to heat your sparge water. This could be a pot on your stove, a tea urn, or a specialist sparge water heater, which is pretty much a tea urn anyway. Unlike everything else on this list, this is not actually required, but they are popular to use as they will save you time during your brew. Let us now look at the pros and cons of all grain brewing. The first pro here is that all grain brewing simply allows the brewer to control every aspect of their end beer. One con is that compared to other brewing methods, all grain is simply more expensive to get started. On the flip side of cost and now being a pro is that the ingredients in general will be cheaper compared to other methods, which in time could offset the higher startup cost. 
Another con relates to storage, and this is because you will need more equipment for all grain. You will also need extra space to store it. Not a big deal for many, but it can be a challenge for apartment brewers, for example. It is fair to say, though, that this does not really apply to all-in-one systems so much, more for multiple vessel setups. And then lastly, there are fewer things more satisfying in life for many than pouring and enjoying your own beer that you brewed. It can put a silly smile on the face of even the most serious of men, and the 100% basis of all grain makes this even more satisfying for many compared to other methods, which quite a few of them have upgraded from. Very subjective, I know, but a valid point for many, I feel. Let's now look at the partial mash way of brewing. I should also point out that there is another variation of this method known as simply extract brewing, where you do not use any grain, just extract in a very similar process. Here is a partial mash kit from Mangrove Jacks that contains much of what we need. Like with the extract beer kit we have some extract, and like with the all grain kit we have some grain. This small bag is also supplied to add our grain into. Partial mash is between the other two brewing methods in that the main fermentables are handled by the extract, whereas small amounts of grain are used to add speciality flavouring effects or colour. With this method there is also a boil where hops are added, so these are also included, and naturally we need yeast too. So this is also included in this kit. The partial mash process is very simple and is outlined in detail by this kit's instructions. Let's look at this process now. You start off by adding the grain in this package into the provided bag. These bags are sold for hop additions usually, but they work well for partial mash too. This grain has already been milled, so as such it is ready to be used straight away. This is then added into a suitable pot. Mangrove Jack suggests at least 19 litres, or just over 5 US liquid gallons. The pot is then filled with a specified amount of water and heated to 65 degrees Celsius or 149 degrees Fahrenheit. Once you reach this temperature, you hold it for 30 minutes and stir periodically. Once these 30 minutes are up, the grain is then removed and you heat to the boil. Once you reach boiling temperature, you can then add all of the extract. Once the extract is all added, give it a good stir up and you're ready to start the boil timer. After this point, the boil is the same as an all-grain boil, with you usually adding hops at various points of the boil. You can then cool your wort in the pot in a sink with cold water and ice packs. This is then added into your fermenter in various ways, including a simple pouring method like this one. With partial mash, it is then usual to top up with water and then pitch your yeast. When it comes to recipes for partial mash, it is actually easy enough to convert all grain recipes into partial mash recipes. You will quickly find resources on how to do this online if you take a search, and some brewing software offers conversion in a matter of seconds. Let's now look at the extra equipment required on top of what was specified for the extract beer kit method. Firstly, just like with all grain, you will need at the very least a pot and a bag that you can control on your stove. Because there is a boil and chemicals to this method, gloves are once again going to be advisable. If your pot has a tap like the one shown here, then this will suffice for transfer of your wort into your fermenter. If not, then you can simply use the pour method that I showed earlier, or some will use a food safe siphon. Let's now look at the pros and cons of partial mash brewing. The first pro is that this is a slightly faster process compared to all grain, but frankly there is only 30 minutes in it. The first con is that it is more expensive to buy your ingredients because extract is more expensive than just grain. The next pro relates to pot size. Because you are not mashing lots of grain at once, you do not need as large a pot, or brewing setup as you do with all grain. This makes partial mash attractive for apartment brewers and those that cannot fit larger pots on their kitchen stove. Another con is that due to the use of extract, you have lost some level of your creative control. I hope that the information within this video has helped you understand enough of each of these brewing methods to form your own opinion as to what is going to be best for you. After all, we all have different considerations due to budget, space and then the time that we are able to spend with the hobby. 
Unfortunately, you may notice some snobbery from some all grain brewers who will make all sorts of wild claims, but let me assure you that the end beer quality potential of each of these methods these days can be quite similar due to the advances over the years. Personally, I am and always have been an all grain brewer who will very occasionally puts together an extract beer kit when I am short of time. This fits my wants and needs very well as someone who really enjoys the creative process behind the beer as much as the beer itself. Beer brewing can certainly be a fantastic hobby for many people with rewards and areas that you perhaps never expected it to have. Do let me know in the comments section of this video if you have any questions. I do hope that you found this video useful, informative and interesting. If so, why not consider liking and subscribing? For further support you can join the channel's Facebook group and if you would like to support the channel then check out the channel's merchandise store as all profits go back into the channel. Until next time, happy brewing!